So I think historically what has helped me the most in any season where the Lord has said, hey, I'm going to do this, mm-hmm. um, or hey, let's go do this, uh, and then it feels like it's taking a long time. Uh, we've actually had a lot of those moments, yeah, right? Yeah. And many of them to do with finances, yep. and you know, but but lots of those moments. And I was thinking about how, you know, in the Old Testament, they the Lord would encourage them when there was a place of breakthrough to build a monument, mm-hmm. right? And the monument wasn't for God. It was for them to remember that God showed up. Wow. Uh, and so my thought was, in a season where you're waiting again, and whatever, whatever that waiting looks like right now, to look back at the monuments that you've built with the Lord, where you've had the same thing, whether it's, you know, it's probably not exactly the same circumstances, yeah. but you've, you have, we all have a history of, I believe God, there was a season of waiting. It was really awful. It was really hard, but I oh, broke through and yay. Yep. And then again, to, I think part of what we can do is look back at those and go, God, you are faithful. I know you to be kind. I know you to be good. I know you to be faithful. And I'm reminding myself, you broke through for me here. You said this and then broke through here. You said this and then broke through here. You said, you know, and you are still that person. So, you know, just sort of speaking to your spirit, like be encouraged, Mm -hmm. you know? And then I was also thinking of just like things like reading Ephesians and Philippians and some of those, these books that are, in my mind, there's the tone of them is so elevated like in terms of how encouraging they are uh, to hang on to God and to Mm -hmm. push in and whatever. And again, knowing he's writing them from prison, knowing he's writing them in the midst of not having the breakthrough, Mm -hmm. but he is knowing he'll see the breakthrough because he's seen God break through for him time and time again. And so, like, I know for myself, I had said this to the school, like when I, in seasons where I'm like, Oh, I'm struggling. I quite literally open Ephesians. Wow. Because That's your go-to. It's my go-to. Like start reading Ephesians. Um I you know Romans works for me too even though Romans is like super long, but Ephesians is shorter if you're mm-hmm. needing a quick hit, you know. <laughs> but just and and read like oh, he's so faithful. You know, from someone who's in prison and is still choosing to declare mm. faithfulness. And to me, that just encourages my spirit. Like, yep, we're good. Like, do I enjoy waiting? No, nobody enjoys waiting. You know, Uh, do I wish we had a plan? Yes, I'm a high shaper. I want a plan. I want a date. I want something to aim at. I want to, you know, but hey, guess what? He's good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm going to, I'm going to focus on that. Do you have it? Like, do you have any other thoughts about caring for your spirit and waiting? Yeah, I think looking at your prophetic words. Yeah. You know, Paul wrote to Timothy and just said, you know, by them you fight the good fight. Mm-hmm. And so I think looking back on your prophetic words and allowing them to encourage you, because at least per- speaking personally, like I know that I get a prophetic word and think it's going to happen tomorrow. Or we want it to. At least. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think looking at your prophetic words, reminding yourself of your prophetic words, yeah. uh, asking for encouragement and input, super helpful. Yeah. And I think, too, if you've shared your prophetic words or shared with, you know, with your close circle of friends or whatever, whatever the Lord is speaking to you about, then they can actually encourage you when you're having your like, oh, my gosh, you know, kind of day. I think another key thing is to celebrate other people's breakthrough, yeah, especially if it's in the area of the breakthrough you need. Yeah, for sure. So... We were trying to get pregnant for 10 months, and I don't know how many people got 14. For it. So yeah. celebrate I that. remember. <laughs> you you waiting to get married. Like, you've yeah. been divorced, and you had this prophetic word about this, you know, strong, handsome hunk of a man, body of a Greek god coming yeah. from the fair islands of Scotland. Yeah. And I hadn't shown up. <laughs> how many bridesmaids? Oh, I don't know how many times I've been a bridesmaid. I mean, right. seriously, pretty close to your 27 dresses, kind and of. And so you're waiting, <laughs> you're waiting for me and, you know, it's important to celebrate. Yeah. Same with financial breakthrough. Like, I remember we were wanting to buy a house. Yeah. Remember, we really wanted a house. Yeah. And then our friends, Gary and, Mor- Gary and Morgan, Gary and Sarah, out of the blue, were given a house. Yeah. 
And I'm like, they don't even want a house. They didn't like, want a house. And I was like, no, 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 no. Position your heart. Like, yeah. Genuinely be happy for them. So yeah. I think, you know, waiting, you talked about waiting being a testing season. It sure is. Well, I also think like, you, because you mentioned the Gary and Sarah thing, and I think we've told that story before, but for me, my immediate reaction wasn't, I was happy for them. I was like, what? They don't even want a house. Right. You know, and, and actually having to take a few hours to have a conversation with the Lord and realize he doesn't have crocodile arms yep. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so even if you find like you're hearing us talk right now and you're going, oh, I don't think I have celebrated other people when they've had the breakthrough because I totally you know, fine. You totally can have fine. an Just, attitude tune up anytime you want. Today's your day. Yep. You know. Mm-hmm. 